This is Wilson Morales talking to the one and only Jennifer Holiday, who appeared on The Masked Singer recently. Talk to me about getting on this show and how to come about. Well, um, I got a phone call from a friend of mine, David Foster, great uh, songwriter, producer, who also produced, uh, and I'm telling you, I'm not going for me in Dream Girls uh, 40 years ago. And so he called me and he said, um, they're looking for you at the Mass Singer. He said, now, do I know where you are or no? You know, and I said, well, I mean, I don't know, David. And he says, well, I did it. He said, it's fun. He said, I think that you would um, enjoy it. And um, so give him a talk. So I had already seen the show many times, of course. And I had also felt that um, my fans love the show and that they might enjoy me being on the show. Uh -huh. Now, how was the setup like? Did you know what they were going to use as a password plus to try to for people to guess who you are, what songs you were going to sing and all of that stuff? No, they don't. Yeah, they don't tell you. They don't tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, so think about it. You, you've been around for 40 years and, you you know, the Massing is a popular show. So it's always great to have visibility. And especially for people outside of New York, people know who you are, but for them, but they know the legend in terms of the, what the Dream Girls meant, but to actually still see you and to see you sing, it's a whole brand new audience. What does that do to you? Well, the only drawback, of course, is that I was performing and I was nameless. So it wasn't really a name until the reveal came. So you had to really be a fan to know that that was my voice under the mask. And then, you know, you could be curious if you, you listen to my music at some time to maybe know my voice. So that I felt I was a little kind of just, not sad is a too strong a word, but I was kind of just like, oh, I wish I could tell people who I am, you know? Wish I could some kind of let them know you know, then that way they can tune in to, to see, you know, but I think that was the only kind of drawback there. Uh-huh. Hold on one quick second, because actually my door is all of a sudden buzzing at the, at the wrong time. Give me one okay. quick second. <laughs> that's what you call messages showing up <laughs> wrong time okay so yeah so that was a that was a good feeling but so like you know it's a great to be on the show and you know what was it like being in costume and having to sit there waiting for them for people to get to find out who you are <laughs> well the costume part was really um exciting in the sense where um you know the have people guessing trying to figure out you know, who you are. Um, the custom itself uh, was very heavy, not the head part, but the body itself was very heavy, but uh, very comfortable, very cool. They made sure of that. And um, so, you know, just kind of waiting for each week to go by and say, they really don't know who the heck I am. <laughs> it was kind of like, they really don't know who the heck I am, you know, so. I think that that part was kind of um. Uh, the good thing about it is that, like you know, your back, your all, all, a lot of your background is being told, so they have to stick around there for an hour or so to figure out who you are, so that when the reveal comes out, they now know who you are, because of all those you know the games that they are playing as far as guessing where you're from. Uh, without giving the, the actual details, they have a glimpse now. And then obviously for those who don't know who you are, they're now Googling you because they all do every time you see somebody what the reveal is. And, you know, you wake up today and you see all these stories about who the reveal is and then your name is mentioned and it's everywhere. As opposed to like, you know, if you were just singing, whether you were having a venue in New York or Boston, whatever, it would only be attracted in those particular area. Here, this is something that goes worldwide. Um, I don't know, you know, I kind of, I didn't even think of that. So, and I'm kind of glad I didn't because then you kind of look at stuff differently. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of a uh, keep to myself. So I'm not out a lot. So I really, I kind of really didn't think about 
you know, beyond where we were going to be last night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. but just so that we know, what have you been up to lately besides being on last night's show? <laughs> Well, um, I have a, a new single out, my first in, in over a decade. Uh, it's an R&B love song. It's called So In Love. And it's uh, gradually uh, moving up. So I'm kind of excited about that, really looking to get back into the music industry at 61 years old. But um, I really um, love where music is right now in the sense that every genre of music is um is open to every ear now and you can reach every ear now more than um ever before um so it's exciting to me uh to look at that what's harder in terms you know coming up with a new song and then marketing it because i think you know you, you can come up with a song at some point but then now it's reaching it out to a lot of people because as you mentioned there are a lot of genres out there there are a lot of platforms but you want the right ears to hear it and you want you know you want to show because you don't want to just say you have a song you want to be able to have, let people know that the song is out there well i would think that the marketing is the hardest part now this is a self-released song uh independent so i don't have a label or anything so the marketing is the hardest part especially like I was telling you, I am not a social person. So I am learning about social media. I'm gonna have to learn a whole much, bunch more in these next couple of weeks uh, for me to um, uh, make this happen and to make this re-entrance into the music business. So I'm learning and, um, and making and readying myself for, uh, for the challenge because um, I know that that's going to play an important part of uh, social media. And so I'm, I'm learning all about that as well. Where does the passion for still continuing to sing come from? Well, the fact that I can still sing. <laughs> that's one thing. The fact that I can still sing and the fact that um, I still have something to offer, you know, and I still have something to offer, not just because I can sing. We all have to find purpose uh, in life and purpose in uh, the career that we choose and our goals. So for me, um, I feel that the passion uh, comes because I still have so much I feel that I can offer. Mm -hmm. Have you been to see any musicals while you're in New York? Do you get a chance to see any musicals? Uh, I have not been to New York since the reopening. Um, uh -oh. I was there, I had, I performed on the Tony Awards last year, but that was during the pandemic and we were, it was very strict with uh, uh, the bubble and when we could go in and when we could go not. So I have not been back uh, since Broadway has reopened. So I'm, I am looking forward to, to seeing uh, a show. Mm -hmm. What do you make of, you know, I saw that you've done The Color Purple a couple of times. What do you make of the new movie that's being done regarding it? I'm so excited to see this movie. I think that, of course, the casting is uh, superb. And uh, I really feel that this will be a great addition to it. Um, and I'm interested to see what they will kind of do in terms of blending the the actual Broadway musical with the film musical because that's where it kind of gets tricky because that's kind of the same thing they did with Dreamgirls. The movie was different than the Broadway play. So I'll be looking, be looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Would you ever want to come back to Broadway or just theater and just come, you know, keep performing? And if so, yeah, was, what would be the yeah. dream? What would be the dream role at this point? <laughs> well, I would love to come back to Broadway. And as you said, I was just recently there uh, in Color Purple uh, with Cynthia Revo, um, and I played Sugar Avery. So that was, that was great. Um, I think that a dream role for me right now is if someone could write something for me or if I could step into something brand new, mm -hmm. that would be amazing. If not, uh, if they, you know, uh, redo uh, something, you know, uh, make it a, a, a revised, you know, a revival of a musical, 
or if they take a show that was primarily, you know, a white musical and then turn it into an African-American musical, that would be a great opportunity. So it's so much, the possibilities are endless. So I'm, I'm here for all of that. I'm open for all of that. Well, either way, it was great to talk to you. Where can we find your single? You can find it so streaming on all platforms. It's on iTunes, it's on Amazon Music, it's on Spotify. You just, wherever you, wherever you get all of your music from, you'll find there. And so it's So In Love, Holidays Filled with Two L's, Jennifer Holiday. On the holiday, <laughs> it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Wherever you're at, stay safe. Hopefully, maybe Thank down you. the road, we'll meet in person. But if not, I'll tune in and listen to your song. Thank you so much. Have a great one. Take Bye. care.